Okay, I'm going to give you a little demo of what I've got working here with BrickCC and the LEGO Mindstorms EV3. So I'll just, uh, I'll show you connecting to the EV3 via USB. So I select EV3 as the brick type. Make sure I pick a port that's a USB port. Either standard or Linux will work. Click OK. And there's a number of tools that work. This first one is the diagnostic tool. And you can see the version, the battery level, EV3 name. You can double click there to change the name. It shows the Bluetooth address, which is also the brick ID without the colons. Then the amount of free memory. The direct controller lets you control the motors. The sensors doesn't don't work yet. Um, the brick piano. Bring that out. You can play tones, different lengths. The same as with the NXC. Once you've played them, you can click play to play back the notes that you played with the keyboard. Let's see. The remote has been modified to work with the four motors. You can set which programs will be run when you click on a button. The running of a program doesn't work yet, but it will list available programs here. And you can pick which one you want to run for each of the five buttons. And then for the tone, you can pick any of the sound files on the brick. And then that does work. And if you click the, t the find remote button, it will play that tone and play that sound file. So then the brick ex or the explorer tool works still has some improvements to be made but is functional so on my computer it takes a little bit longer than normal to load but it also depends on the size of the files that you have on your memory cards right now it only lists files on the micro SD card let's look at this file called snapshot we'll be using it in a little bit it, you can see it's an ELF executable. I built it. I've got source code available for that. Built it using Brick CC. But with the Explorer, you can play sound files. So there's an example of playing a sound file. You can filter to different types of files, like the executables, only showing the RBF files. Again, running a program from within Brick CC does not yet work. And if there's a lot of large files, it can take a very long time. So the library folder does contain a number of large files, none of which are RBF files, so it didn't show any files. But you can double-click on a folder to change directories and then go back up with the dot dot. Let's just look at a few with this viewer tool. There are some files that I've configured so that BrickCC knows them to be text files like .nxc uh, but most files it doesn't know them to be text files so it'll show them using the hex viewer or binary file viewer let's look at a few other things here actually on the right hand side let me see I've got some image files this is using the IR fan view utility which I will open up here bring that into the screen so you can see so this is an XBM image which is actually a text file I've got some here on the EV3 as well play that sound file. Go back up a level. And let's see. Just review some other text files. So dot sh files I've marked as text. Dot log files are text. Dot nxc files are text. But it doesn't know the XBM files are text files, even though it is actually a text file. So it shows it using the hex viewer. 
I can just drag and drop files from from the brick to the PC or from the PC to the brick. Either way, it works fine. Here's the file I just uploaded from the EV3. Sorry. Let me bring up my putty window. Connected via a wired Ethernet cable, which works really well. Um, let me see. So this is the snapshot executable that I built using BrickCC. I'm going to run it while the EV3 is running the standard firmware. It uses the slash dev slash FB0 device, which is the frame buffer. And this tool lets you create snapshots of the image by reading image data from the frame buffer. It supports a few different image types, uh, a raw data file format, uh, XBM, and two different versions of the portable bitmap format, P1, which is an ASCII format, and P4, which is a binary format. This is the XBM format. I have a little bit of a problem where it's not supposed to have the file extension in the names of the objects that the pound defined width and the static hair array should not have the dot in it so i have to fix that but in any case that's format two zero and one are both raw binary formats one is the raw display buffer format which it's 178 pixels wide and 128 pixels tall. And then the default is F0, which is another raw format. It's the actual data in the frame buffer, which has basically... As you can see, almost not quite three times as many bytes than the, the actual display buffer memory has 79, 7680 versus 2944. That shows you the size of you. I'll put the raw frame buffer, you'll get a file of 7680, and if you output the raw display, you'll get a file size 2944. And the, the best format to use for the purposes that we'll see in just a little bit will be this F1 raw display format. So here you can see zero dash f zero is in raw dis uh, frame buff one is the raw, raw display two is xbm which is a basically c source code that you can in include pound include three is a ascii portable bitmap four is a binary portable bitmap p4 I do plan in the future of Im implementing PNG and BMP, but that's not yet implemented. By default, the file name is snapshot, and it should automatically set the file extension based on the format type. So I just created a file. Let's go look in BrickCC for that file. So actually, so four was the P4 PBM. That's what. I'm, but let's go look at that. So I uploaded snapshot.pbm. I can view it with Irfan view, and that's what is actually on my EV3 screen at the moment. The test.xbm is the same image as the XBM. It's quite a bit larger since it's uh, an ASCII format. But let's look at the NXT. What was called the and what 
which is normally called the NXT screen, but I've modified the name to be screen capture or brick screen. I apologize for it being slightly off the edge. You can see that you can change the brick name from one of the options on the pop-up menu, a utility function. You can set preference, preferences here. I can pull now and as you can see I have successfully changed the name and I'll change it back to EV3 and pull now and successfully changed it back to EV3. I'm going to go ahead and save this or actually show you the preferences first. The same preferences that you had with the NXT. You can change the file to hive. You can change the base file name where you want to save it to. And I'll go with save, click save, and it'll just save using those preferences to that folder. Let me show you where that showed up. Go to my pictures folder. Once I get all this on the screen here, and look for the NXT image file name. And there we go right here, NXT image underscore zero zero. It's a PNG. Double click on that and bring up the Windows image viewer. And as you can see, it uh, has saved that image. Okay. Let me go back to the Explorer tool. Anytime the windows are submerged, you can just bring them forward with this view tool windows and it will pop forward any of the tool windows which are hidden by the brick CC window. Now if I rename this snapshot, which you can do from the tool, as you can see here, then the screen capture tool will no, no longer work so it relies on being able to execute that program to create the bitmap that it uploads it uploads the bitmap image and then displays the contents using the screen capture tool so I'll rename it back to snapshot and then having done that the screen capture tool will start working again let me go ahead and delete you can delete files from here as well it refreshes the window so you have to scroll back down to where you were I'm going to go ahead and delete a number of these image files that I've created delete test.xbm Go ahead and delete the test.raw. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and copy these images over to the PC first. Here. So let me select these. F buffer XBM X buffer P1 PBM P4 PBM and all those display XBM all of those is drag and drop them to my PC here and then let me just show you real quick the PBM that's the P1 PBM let me go ahead and show you the P4 which is the binary portable bitmap that works and then let's look at the display version as well displayed p1 pbm that worked 
So now that I've uploaded those files, I'm going to go ahead and delete them again, or delete them from the EV3. Okay. Alright. So screen capture should work now. I'll go ahead and pull it out. So if pull down works, then of course the pulling works, but it is not anywhere near as fast as when you can directly retrieve the screen bytes from the firmware instead of having to do it via external utility. But with, with pulling turned on, the one second level, you can see that as I move around with the buttons on the EV3, it does update the image. But pulling in this way does affect the image on the EV3 as well. So that's one of the reasons why the faster pulling rates are also to say are no longer available with this, not available with the EV3 version of the brick screen. But you can see I can step through the brick info screen. If I do it slowly enough, you can see it as I do it. And all the way down to where it's showing the IP address of the EV3. Let me turn off polling. I'll save this image. And then I could also save as, I'm going to save it as a JPEG to, the, to my desktop. So switch to my desktop, give it a file name, Futu. And then with Windows Explorer, I can go ahead and, or actually just double click on the file, sorry, on the desktop and I can open it. Okay. Let me really quickly also show you that I've built into Bricks, you see the image editor that I've modified this. This is Andreas Dreyer created this. Uh, it's the original version of the NXT RIC edit, but modified to work with the RGF files. I made a few minor extensions to it so you can constrain circles and rectangles to being squares, circles instead of ellipses and rectangles. Um, you can save it to a file. And you saw me adjust the scale factor, which you can adjust down to the smallest level. But adjust up to much larger than will actually fit on your screen. And for some reason, I was having problems here changing folders. So I'll just save it to the root of my D drive. And that's all I'm going to show you for that. Thank you for watching.